Neuralink competitor Synchron shares this video of one of their patients using an Apple Vision Pro with his mind. This is the first time this has ever been done, and the idea of pairing a brain-computer interface with a VR headset is super interesting and opens up a world of possibilities. Meet Friend, an AI wearable device designed to keep you company and, well, be your friend, I guess. Yes, this is completely real and a little dystopian, but we'll take a deeper look at it to see how good it actually is and what it can do. Lastly, the combination of AI and robotics continues to show remarkable potential. In this article, they talk about some of the current capabilities of this autonomous robot dentist, and I was honestly mind blown by the sheer speed at which this thing can operate. <laughs> If you haven't heard of Synchron before, they're a company that designs minimally evasive brain-computer interfaces, or BCIs, kind of like Neuralink, except they don't actually implant the BCI inside the brain. So this is actually the first time ever that someone has controlled an Apple Vision Pro with a BCI, and even though Mark isn't able to move his hands very well due to his ALS, he was still able to control the Apple Vision Pro by simply thinking of moving his hands. As you can see, he's able to play games like Solitaire and navigate through other apps, but unfortunately, they didn't try much else. It would have been cool to see him try something more complex, like a game that requires speed and reaction time, or a game where he is somehow controlling the character with his thoughts instead of his actual body, but maybe they did try something like that and it just didn't work out. Either way, this is just the beginning of combining a BCI with a VR headset. There's a ton of potential for this technology, one example being the use of a VR headset, like the Apple Vision Pro, to control a humanoid robot. You can imagine how useful this would be for people who are disabled or suffering from a disease that deteriorates their body, giving them the ability to do basic tasks and regain their independence. This company, Synchron, is also exploring the use of LLM integration within their BCIs in order to enhance user experience. The idea is to have large language models like ChatGPT take in relevant context in the form of text, audio, and visuals to provide relevant prompt ideas that users can select with their BCI. Kind of like an autofill feature, but one that learns over time and adjust its options to fit more what the user would actually say. So there's many potential use cases for BCIs and it's important for companies like Neuralink to have competition so that they continue to move forward and innovate. Elon Musk is certainly exploring these potential use cases. He stated in a live interview recently that people who have lost limbs will eventually be able to get electronic replacements that can be controlled by a BCI, in this case Neuralink. Take a listen. One cool thing I should mention is that that would be, I, th I think, interesting down the road is also for Optimus, um, you know, for people that have lost uh, their limbs, um, the that um, that if you take Neuralink, um, basically being able to control, which, which the Neuralink version one telepathy allows you to control elect electronic devices. Um, if somebody's lost their arms or legs or whatever the case, and and um, and attaching that and enabling combining that with a neural link would, would give them essentially cybernetic limbs. Uh, kind of like Luke, I don't know, like Luke Skywalker in um, Empire Strikes Back, you know, where you got like a, a robot wrist, robot hand. <laughs> um, so I think that could be pretty incredible for people that have lost limbs, being able to have like a cybernetic limb. Um, but anyway, I think that'd be a cool um, sort of... Uh, combined effort between Neuralink and Tesla. So the future is coming and in some ways it's already here. I'm so out of breath. We made it. Woo! I don't know how to woo very good. That's fair. All right, let's go. Let me show you how to game, bro, okay? Oh, come on, come on. Oh, let's go! Are you serious? Come on, man. I hate this game. Take notes, baby. Oh, man, you guys suck, bro. You look like the back let's of the game. Let's go, let's go. Dude, what? How did you do that? I know the effects are crazy. It's dank, I could eat one of these every day. Oh, sorry, I got you messy. It's really nice up here. How'd you find this place? I don't know. I just kind of like to come up here to be by myself. 
I've never brought anybody else. I mean, besides her. She goes everywhere with you, right? Mm-hmm. Guess I must be doing something right, though. I guess so. We'll see. So this thing kind of reminds me of the Humane Pin. I don't know if you guys remember that AI pin that came out a few months ago. It ended up not doing too well and a lot of people were calling it a ripoff due to its insane price of $6.99, not to mention the $24 a month subscription fee on top of that. But AI Friend is different, mainly because it's only going to be retailing for $99 and you can actually pre-order it right now for that price, but also because they didn't focus on productivity and usefulness like the Humane Pin and instead on connectivity and compatibility companionship. So I'm eager to see what people think of this product once we start getting it in hand and I'm starting to notice a trend where the idea of conversing with AI is becoming more and more prevalent in our daily lives. For example, here we can see that Taco Bell has decided to expand their AI voice ordering at drive throughs nationwide. This is kind of big news because they've been testing these for roughly two years now at select stores and clearly they found them to be successful and worth implementing across all their stores. So you might as well start getting used to talking with AI which I guess at this point is basically like talking to another human because other fast food chains are likely going to copy this and it'll likely extend into other industries as well. In other news, Google DeepMind's Gemini 1.5 Pro has officially taken the lead in the chatbot arena leaderboards. This is the first time ever that Gemini 1.5 Pro takes first place, surpassing GPT-40 and Claude 3.5 Sonnet. An impressive feat for sure and what makes this even more interesting is that people were speculating that Google DeepMind may have made some behind the scenes secret updates that resulted in this potentially having to do with reasoning. So definitely something we'll be checking up on. They've also managed to take the lead in the vision leaderboards, giving Google DeepMind the true lead right now in the LLM space. Obviously, we're still awaiting the next frontier of AI models, but it's cool to see that these companies are continuously making minor improvements. And as those of you who have been following the AI space know, this is the worst AI will ever be in literally every aspect. And in fact, it'll likely improve much faster than it already has been in the past. Now, speaking of rapid AI advancement, Black Forest Labs, an AI startup, has recently introduced Flux1, their latest AI image generation model. Just going through their website here, they have a ton of examples of the kinds of images their model can generate, and the ones that really caught my eye are the ones depicting humans. This model can generate shockingly accurate pictures of human beings that I honestly wouldn't have known were AI. They're also extremely high quality images, and I mean, some of these images, there's literally no way you can easily tell that they're AI. This model seems to be able to do a little bit of everything and sure these images might just be cherry picked but to me it seems that this model might just be the real deal just based on the amount of styles of images it was able to produce. They've also hinted that they're working on a video generation model and if there's any model that's going to beat OpenAI Sora anytime soon I'd probably bet on this one. So with AI becoming more and more powerful OpenAI has pledged to give the US government early access to its next Frontier model, which is likely going to be GPT-5. In my opinion, OpenAI is probably just doing this to save face after they received that letter from the US government, basically asking them for more information about their safety procedures. But it's also possible that the next frontier of models are just going to be so powerful that Sam Altman doesn't want to take any chances. As you can see from this tweet, he's been advocating for the US government to get more involved in AI and to take it seriously, so maybe they do have some really powerful AI models behind closed doors that we don't really know about yet. Another thing I found to be concerning that not many people were talking about, Perplexity AI will soon start selling ads within AI search. Here it says, Perplexity will soon begin to pay publishers when their content is used to form a specific type of the AI search engine's answers. And then further down it says, Starting later this quarter, Perplexity will let brands buy related follow-up questions that will appear below the initial answer to a user query. The questions will be clearly labeled as sponsored, Perplexity says. The brand will pay Perplexity a certain undisclosed fee for every thousand user views of the sponsored question. So this is a little bit concerning because now companies can essentially pay perplexity to redirect their users to their products and services or even just their information. They do mention though that it will be clearly labeled as sponsored which makes it a little bit less concerning but I'm curious to hear what you guys think of this. Please let me know in the comments. Finally, we have to talk about this robot dentist that made headlines for being the first ever AI controlled autonomous robot to perform an 
entire dental procedure on a human being. Not only could this robot work completely autonomously, but it's also way more efficient. Here they state, the machine's first specialty, preparing a tooth for a dental crown, Perceptive claims this is generally a two-hour procedure that dentists will normally split into two visits. The robo-dentist knocks it off in closer to 15 minutes. So when we're talking about saving hours of time in the medical field, that's obviously going to be a huge benefit for everyone. And another thing to mention is that this company is actually being backed by Mark Zuckerberg's dad, Edward Zuckerberg, who is a dentist himself that clearly understands what's coming. In the same week, we also saw the first US patient to receive a robot-assisted dual kidney transplant. So the combination of AI and robotics is really starting to show a lot of potential, even for really important use cases like medical procedures, which is honestly incredible. And I don't think people truly understand just how revolutionary this can be. Like we're really living in some truly interesting times. Anyways, that's it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll be seeing you in the next one.